Okay, so coming down from that, we've got this toolbar across the top where the first three icons are going to let us do new map, open, save. Then we move over to the arrow left and right, and this lets us undo and redo. And then moving over to that, we've got an actor search button. This allows us to quickly come in with a dialogue and search for specific actors. As a matter of fact, Logan, go ahead and click on that. You can see it brings this dialogue up right here, and we can set a filter on the right-hand side. We can type in a name, and as Logan actually begins to type, you can see that it starts to narrow down the actors. And as we said earlier, that actors is basically everything. Right now he's showing you lights, but a second ago when he started to actually type a B for brush, you saw brushes were being listed in there as well. So you can come in here and you can filter by name, event, and tag. And this becomes really helpful later on when you've got a scene that's just you know heavily popul populated. So anyways, this is a quick way of searching for actors and selecting them. So we'll go ahead and close that out. Uh, after that, we've got a series of icons here that basically give us access to various browsers. And Logan, you want to talk about some of these browsers real quick? Okay, browsers are what uh, allow you to load in and view stuff so, such as uh, actual actors, uh, various textures, various static meshes, and other very important content uh, uh, elements like that. Okay, so real quick, go ahead and open up the, let's say, the actor browser. So from in here, you're saying I can basically dig down through a hierarchy and find a specific actor that I may want to add to the scene or... All right, add a pickup base or under that a weapon, uh, a weapon base okay. if you're going to actually go to add a weapon into the level. Okay. I can also get to code for these actors from here as well, can I? Right. Simply double-click or you can right-click and view, on, view the code. Okay. Not meaning to scare anybody out there that's completely new to this stuff. I just want to show you this is quite powerful. Yeah, it's in there. Okay, so let's go ahead and bring up... Uh, let's see. In fact, go ahead and just show some of the different browsers if you don't right. mind. Also notice that you have a set of tabs, which also correspond to some of these buttons. So these buttons just basically give you quick access. Once you already have a browser window open, you can switch in between the different browsers just by using the tabs. If you wanted to switch over to static meshes, say. Okay. Show us the static mesh. Show us how this browser thing works. All right. This one have, has a 3D window, which is very helpful to view static meshes. So you can kind of pan around and... Um, yeah, you might want to pull list. something in there that's a little bit bigger or easier to see. All right, let me just load it. So right now up. you're opening a package, aren't you? Right. See, it had a few loaded in that were set as defaults that would come up with the editor or that I had been using. Uh, you can go back to the files that these brushes actually came from and load them up out of those files. So I could load up this uh, specific file, and then we can go and kind of filter through some of these different meshes. And again, these were constructed in another 3D application and then brought over into the level, right? Right. Okay. So uh, so anyway, so these are various browsers, and we're going to be using these browsers as we dig deeper and deeper into level design. So you can go ahead and close that there, Logan. Okay. All right, so if you want to pick up with the 2D Shape Editor. and All right. 2D Shape Editor, it uh, lets you draw out um, a shape and then allows you to do interesting things with that shape. You can go in and manipulate these vertices, add more vertices, uh, clip edges, and so on. And when you're done, you can either extrude that straight out into a 3D brush, you can revolve that, and other interesting things. It's very useful to uh, provide like curving type architecture. Awesome. Okay, so if you want to go ahead and finish off talking about the last few icons that are left up there. All right. You have uh, the script editor, which opens up that window that we clicked on when we double clicked uh, a, uh, an actor. Also, you have uh, uh, actor and surface properties. There's other shortcuts and w ways of getting to these, which we'll be looking at. And then these set of buttons uh, control various aspects of rebuilding. If uh, you have a few shortcuts to rebuilding, like say just geometry or just lights or just only the changed lights, uh, your uh, paths, meaning like the navigation that bots will use uh, to find their way around the level. And finally, you have a button that will let you build everything uh, your geometry, lighting, and all your paths. And finally, you have uh, the button to set where you go and grab all your settings, like what levels to build stuff to, what format to save the light maps to, etc. Okay. And then next to that, we got a little joystick, and this allows us to go and actually play the map that we're working on. And then finally, we've got context-sensitive help on the end where we can click this and then go click various things that we may be looking for help on. Okay, so from there, last thing, we'll go and switch over to the far left-hand side. You see we've got a series of icons running down in toolbars over here. And basically, this section is divided up into six different categories. And, Logan, if you want to go ahead and start off by closing them all up except, let's say, the very first one. 
Okay. This will just kind of make things really simple for a beginner looking at this. All right, the very first one is our camera miscellaneous icons. You want to talk about some of these real quick? All right, the camera, uh, this is the default one that's selected. This will um, leave a couple of buttons free for different uh, camera moving operations, which we'll be getting into in the viewport section. Okay. So you have vertex editing, which will allow you to isolate certain brushes that you want to move the individual vertices on. You have brush scale and brush rotate. What these will do is take some of the buttons that you would normally new, uh, use for moving the camera and allow you to uh, manipulate brushes and more axes. Okay. You have your texture pan and rotate if you want to adjust textures uh, from the viewport instead of from the surface editor. You have uh, some brush... Uh, brush clipping. This will allow you to go into a mode where you can start uh, placing clip markers. We'll get into the, um, the tools that use that later. You have a free, uh, freehand brush drawing tool. You have uh, face drags and, and some various other stuff. Okay, very good. And so the next section, if you want to go ahead and open it up, would be, excuse me, brush clipping. Okay, that's where we have the uh, the tools specific to just brush clipping. You saw we had the uh, the in a sense the brush clipping mode we could go into. This is where we actually after we've placed clipping markers, like do we want to clip the brush or do we want to split it instead of clipping it? Do we need to flip the clipping normal or do we want to delete all the clipping markers that have currently been placed? Okay, very good. All right, so then from there, next thing we get down into is brush primitives. All right. Now these are those uh, those BSP brushes that we're talking about. What you would actually use if you needed to carve out part of your level, or add to your or level, add, or add back. And each of these have different. If you right click on one of these, you can bring up a properties window, which would be relevant to what you're building. A cube would have height, width, and breadth. Stairs might have like the number of stairs you can create. A cylinder would have a radius, and so on. And these things, what they do is they actually adjust your template brush or your construction brush to match this the shape, if you will. Right. And then you can use that for subtracting out of the level or adding to the level. Exactly. Okay, very good. And then a couple other things real fast. We've got our CSG operations. These guys end up becoming very important throughout the level design process. These are what you would actually use once you have the construction brush. This would say whether you want to use that brush to add, whether you want it to use it to subtract. And then other interesting things like actually using your brush to conform to another brush, also known as intersecting or the opposite de-intersecting. Okay, very cool. So we're going to be using this a great deal throughout this VTM right here. All right, then uh, just uh, the last two real quick. We've got selection and movement rate icons. All right, this is where if you want to hide, uh, hide or show certain actors or brushes, uh, if you wanted to show all of them, if you wanted to invert your current selection, and then if you wanted to change the camera speed, if you want to speed it up for, say, a huge part of a level, or slow it down if you need to do some very fine vertex editing. Very cool. And then finally, we've got mirror brush and some other miscellaneous icons as well. Right. Okay. So uh, if you want to go ahead and open those back up, just so that we don't get ourselves confused here a little bit later on with everything hidden. All right. Now, down along the bottom, last area, we've got our command prompt. We've got a log down there with some various settings as well. All right. Uh, command, this is where you can actually type in uh, various commands. Like, you can actually, like, uh, if you look at the log, you can see a few. Or if you happen to know, like, you can actually enable certain stats uh, in the views. Then you can go ahead and open up the uh, the log window if you want to see what the editor's been dumping to the log or actually see commands that were generated either typed by you or generated by the editor. Okay. And then uh, last, just I guess real quick over the last couple down there. Uh, you can lock the current selection, um, toggle all vertex snap on and off, toggle grid snap if you need to, uh, for a very useful and should be kept on for aligning brushes, uh, s snap to the rotation grid, and draw scale 3D. Okay, very good. So this is just a real quick overview of everything. We're going to start looking at things a lot closer starting in the very next lesson where we will actually create our very first little level. So this should be a lot of fun. Let's go ahead and get started. Thanks with this lesson. Thanks a lot, guys.